So we'll give you some ideas of things to be thinking about. There are so many tools that we couldn't possibly explain to you in one hour. So what we wanna do is show you how to think about using these tools and give you some resources so that you can go and learn more if you want to or follow up if they're of interest to you. Um, so we'll go through some examples that have been used in our reporting or in other people's reporting, and then some examples that are just for fun, and then you get to try it for yourself. So a quick refresher of what the part one was about, just for those of you who are here, or if you didn't join, just to give you an idea. So OSINT is this kind of really large space that includes all sorts of tools, basically accessing information that is somehow publicly available. Sometimes you have to pay for it or use fancy tools or very technical means, but it's basically using different research methods to try to access information that's already out there in the world. So last time, Ajibola talked, oops, Ajibola talked about tracking ships and tracking flights with these types of tools. And he gave us a bunch of examples and showed us specifically how to use these different tools. And so this is just a, a summary of kind of the list of tools that exist to get an idea of flights and, and to figure out where planes are going or where uh, ships are going. And we looked in specific at one flight, which was the aircraft of Nigeria's president-elect where it was registered at a specific time. And we used this identification number of that plane to be able to do some research. So I thought we would continue with social media for research. And the idea of connecting these two sessions is that you think about, <clears throat> excuse me, none of these tools stand alone. All of these tools can be used together for different pieces of the research, and they can help you see more angles or find other ways that you can corroborate the information that you're finding. So just like you would get one interview and you get another interview and those together help you understand what's going on, you can use tracking of a plane and then you can use social media and then you can use an interview to try to get stronger, more robust corroboration of the information that you're using in your reporting. So that's really what we're trying to kind of connect here. And that's why we're going to start with the examples that Ajibola gave us, and then we'll move into some other ones. So the first thing that I want to start with is just thinking about how do we actually search on the internet? So most search engines that we use already allow a lot of advanced searching. And sometimes we do it without even really noticing that we're doing it. But I want to kind of talk through the tools that we use already, because we're going to then apply those to social media. So the first thing is quotation marks. Maybe you've used this before where you put something in exact quotations. So you say, I want this exact combination of words exactly the way it is. The next would be a minus. So you can say, take away any results that include this one word. Another thing might be a site search. So looking specifically at information that's only on one website. So I'm gonna give you an example of that. Just make sure you can still see my screen. Okay, so here is a site search. So if I search, let's say bbc.com, I can find any example of a specific word on that website. So I'm gonna search for Nigeria to start with bbc.com. Now what I'm finding are all of the results that use that word on this specific website. But I can also do that for government websites. So if I search Nigerian government, I can see that many of the Nigeria government websites end with this, .gov.ng. So now I could search for, let's say, flight, and I could do a site search, .gov.ng. And I'm going to find all of the results that are on any website that ends with this. So all of these government websites, what they show about the word flight. So if I go back to the example here, if we're looking specifically, I'll go back so you can see it, for this plane, we see VPCBT. These are the, the codes that we searched for last time. I can search specifically for that on Nigerian websites as one example 
of a way of narrowing down my search. Now, another thing that you can do is look for a file type. So the file type allows you to filter what kind of file results you want. So you can look for Excel files, for PDF files, or even for document files. So here's an example of the same search that we are looking at. And in this case, we're looking for it in PDF documents. Now we're getting any PDF document that has that combination of letters. So you can see here, we have different things that have registration, different types of information that are available about that plane and where it's registered. Okay, now the reason that we're talking about these is that when you're doing searching on social media, it's really helpful to think about these search tools that exist for us also in the social media space. So we can search specifically one person, one website, we can search a type of information, we can search an exact result, we can remove things that we don't want. Oops. There we go. Okay, so when we're trying to apply that to social media, first thing that we want to do is think about using these search techniques to narrow down our search field. Because if we just search that plane, we could get millions of results. So we wanna narrow it down as much as possible, but we still wanna keep it broad so that we find unexpected results. The next thing is to consider the language that people use to post or share information. And this is really important when you're doing this research. Think about your audience, not what you want to find. So if someone is angry, they might use really emotional words or swear words even. But if they know the context, if they're a professional, if they're an expert, they might use things like slang or short form. They might not actually use the full words. If they're really technical, maybe they're gonna use scientific terminology or jargon. And if they're sharing in a really small group, maybe they're not even gonna add text. Maybe they're only gonna share photos or videos. So by searching for text, we might restrict our results and miss things. If they're regularly tagging themselves, they might tag other important people as well. So for example, a politician who's regularly appearing in public, they might also tag other people in those posts. And if they travel often, they might also tag or add a location. So we're gonna look at about how, how all of those pieces can help us do better research and find more information that then we can use in our investigations, either as leads or to confirm something um, in social media. So here's an example. So Twitter, it has a normal search. And if I search in a normal search, this code, I can find results about all the articles that have to do with that flight or all of the posts that have those words in it. The first thing that I can do to filter my results down even further is that I can actually select that I only wanna see results that include a video. And in this case, I actually get a video of that airplane with the code and I can see a location and a time that it was posted. So I'm getting specific information that might be more useful for my investigation. Another thing that you can do with Twitter advanced searching is that you can then combine all these different search ideas we've been talking about. So you can include this exact phrase and any of these words, landed, departed, flight, just to see what you can find. You can also reference accounts if you think there are specific accounts that might be included. So if you wanted to say, I want flight and I want any mention of a specific political figure. Oops. You can also do date filters. So if you know that something happened in a specific time, you can combine the date filter with the information that you're looking for. And again, the goal of this is to try to narrow your search as much as possible while still keeping it really broad. So we're gonna go into some more uh, detailed examples of what that looks like. So on Facebook, we have the search function on Facebook does not work really well. It's very simple. It doesn't allow you to do a lot. So there have been some amazing people, some of whom are from kind of the journalism OSINT world who have developed tools that help us do better research and these kinds of searches. So the first one is called Who Posted What? And who posted what is especially good for finding account IDs or information about accounts. 
I'm going to show you an example of what I mean by that. And the other one is called graph.tips. And this one is especially good for combining searches together. So just like I was talking about that we want to combine pieces of information that we need together to create a focused but wide search. So we're going to do an example and we're going to try it with Justin Bieber because I think it'll be a little bit more fun and also we don't um, have to expect to find anything unusual. So the first thing is we're going to take his account. So the first thing is to find his account. If I just search for Justin Bieber, I can see here, I can find the account that belongs to him. Oops, this one is a group. Let me just find a person, Justin Bieber. Here we go. Okay. So we found, oh, this is not the account that I wanted. One second, sorry. Aha, here we go, sorry. People. Okay, we're gonna start with his hometown. So here in our example, I know that Justin Bieber is actually from Canada where I'm also from. He's from Stratford, Ontario. So I'm really curious if anybody posted about him before he actually was famous. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to a location. So you'll notice on Facebook, you can find pages that are actually locations. So you see here, it says town or city. This one also says school, university. So these are locations. And if you click on here, you can see at the top that we actually have a code that's affiliated with that location. So we're gonna copy that code. And now I'm going to go to my tool and I'm gonna to go to graph.tips. This is the one that is really good for combining searches that I wanna do. So I wanna find out anybody who said something about Justin Bieber before he was really, really famous or maybe in the last you know, 10 years before now. So I'm gonna look specifically for posts. Now I found this location ID number. So here, I'm gonna paste that ID number that I copied. I'll take away that slash at the end. I'm gonna add that filter. And then I'm gonna say, okay, I, I'm not interested in now, but I am interested in like as old as possible, let's see. And then I'm interested in until let's say 2016 out of curiosity. So I'm gonna add this date filter. And if you see here, it's creating this kind of funny search at the bottom where it's added in a filter for the year because I added this date filter in and it's added in this filter for the location. So you have to click those buttons. And then I'm gonna put in the name. So I said that I was looking for Justin Bieber. So I'm going to go back to that page. Oops. And I'm going to just type Bieber to see what I get. Now I can show the URL to, to see it and then copy and paste it, or I can just open it in a new window, which is what I'm gonna do now. So now what I'm finding are all of the different people who have posted from this location that we identified. So in this case from Stratford, Ontario, which is the area where Justin Bieber was actually from. And if I go down, I actually found something really interesting here. I found a post that presumably has somebody who's related to him, possibly his parents, from 2015. So I found very personal information from someone who actually probably knows him in real life from before he was famous, or at least from earlier in his career. So you can see different things that exist. This is a very filtered search. So we can also look at the people. So in this example, if I go to who posted what, I'm gonna, uh, let me choose a different person. Let me choose, um, uh, let me choose, let's try this, Donald Trump, if he is still here, a public figure. Okay, Donald Trump Jr. So now here, you can see that in his account, he doesn't have a number associated. So for the location, 
when we looked at the location, we were able to find a number that was affiliated. And with most locations, you'll see that number. If we pick another thing, like maybe the university, you're also going to see a number affiliated. So those numbers also exist for people, but you have to get to them. So in the case of, um, here we are. Yeah, in the case of Donald Trump Jr., I'm gonna use who posted what, and I'm going to figure out what his special ID number is. So I'm gonna paste his URL, and then I'm gonna search for the ID. And it came back with a number. So now I can see a number that's associated and I can go back into graph.tips, which is the one where, if you remember, I said, who posted what is really good at finding account IDs. I think graph.tips is better at combining searches together. So I'm going to go to graph.tips now. I'm going to clear all of the filters that I have. And I'm going to first say posts from a specific person. So from Donald Trump Jr. And I'm going to say, I don't need a location for this one. And I maybe I don't need a date filter in this case. I, I can just leave it. If you notice here, it's not at the bottom. So I haven't added a date filter. I've only added the specific person. And I'm gonna do keywords. Let's say vegetarian. Let's see how many times Donald Trump Jr. has talked about vegetarian. So now you can find results in which that shows up. Different results filtered by that specific word. Okay. So this is just a silly example. These are different examples to show you that we can combine these ideas of filtering in information in these different ways to try to find more precise results. So for Justin Bieber, we might be able to find people who knew him before. We might be able to do that with a lot of people, but we can also do things like people talking about a protest in a specific area or people talking about the police in a specific region. Now, not everybody posts a location. So we need to make sure that we consider the ways that people think about the information that they're putting online, just like I said before. So thinking about the language people are going to use, whether they'll be using technical words or angry words, whether they'll be using locations or if they're trying to hide their location. So for example, uh, in some projects that we work on in Sudan or South Sudan, people don't want their location shared because they want to stay anonymous. So sometimes they'll hide the location but still publish content. Okay. Now, the other thing that those search tools can do is they can actually help you find information on other social media platforms. So we can actually search on Telegram by searching with Google. So I can search on Telegram using this type of a search, a site search. And in this case, I searched for greenwashing, which is the idea that something that claims to be good for the environment actually isn't. So here I'm looking for anything that's a Telegram post or channel within a Telegram channel that says greenwashing. And you can also use online tools. There are a whole bunch of these that exist, but one of them is this Intelligence X Telegram tool. And this, you can do the same thing. You type in a keyword and you can find Telegram channels that exist. You can do the same thing with YouTube. So you can also do the same keyword search. And I could take out, for example, uh, eco-friendly if I wanted to. I can take away words and I can include words and search specifically on YouTube to find any videos that use those keywords. I can also, in this case, apply filters like time results and do a custom range. So I could say I want specifically from a certain year if there were results that I wanted. So if I was looking for videos about police violence, I could search YouTube for videos with keywords added and reduced and then do time results or I could search around specific locations. Okay, so that was the section that I wanted to talk about first, about thinking about how to search social media. So we're gonna take a quick stop and just say, if you have any questions, I know we're going through very quickly, a lot of different ideas. If you have questions, you can put them in the chat and then we'll try to answer a few of them. 
Let me see. Do we have any? Yeah, thank, ah. thank you uh, very much, Carolyn, and welcome folks who have entered. Um, we're very glad to have such a robust group here. And uh, I did I did want to mention that George, a friend and colleague in our community, he asked a little bit earlier, Carolyn, I hear that EXT produces more results, but is that the same as file type? So that's one question from George. If other folks have questions, please uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I also just wanted to mention that we have enabled the closed captioning. I know Sherry was having some challenges with um, hearing Carolyn. So if anybody else has that challenge, the, the, the captions are available. We also will post the video on our YouTube channel. So sorry to interrupt that piece, Carolyn, but George had that question. Thank you so much. Perfect. Um, yeah, and I think, so one of the things I would say is that a lot of these tools change and they change very quickly. So for example, some of the, the search tools that we use on Google used to be more effective and then now, they are less effective. So my advice is always to try more than one different approach. Um, EXT, I, I tend not to use that search. Um, I, I find that file type works really well for me, but I think that what we're trying to show you in, in this case is that you can try different ones and you might get different results that show up first as well. Um, and the same, for example, with the different Facebook searches or Telegram tools that exist. There are dozens of tools to try to find uh, information in a Telegram channel or to look up information on Facebook. So I'm showing you some examples. Um, oh yeah, uh, another one that I'll show you. Um, but I would advise you to always try more than one because you'll never know what one tool might not find you, the other one could. Um, and I saw another question, which was how do I go um, to the, uh, Twitter advanced search. So let me see if I have an example here. I think I can just pop out into our example. Okay, just a second. Um, so the advanced search on Twitter, I can just do it. Oops. Twitter. Okay, so if I do a search, so let's say, um, yeah, I love Trump. This was an example that I was searching for earlier to, to get some examples for you here in search settings. So you can see here that there are these three dots on the right of the search bar. From here, you can get to the advanced search. And then you can do all of these words, this exact phrase, any of these words, none of these words, specific accounts. So if you want the same way that we've been doing on Facebook, you could do any, any tweets that reference a specific person. So for example, a politician, and then you could say maybe angry words. So you can find out all of the angry things people are saying to a specific political figure. So think about, again, the language that people might be using, and then think about what combinations could get you good results. And again, you can do a date filter here as well. Okay. Yeah, and I see uh, Justin Bieber's page. So later, if somebody wants to try that, we can do it. Um, I think we'll continue on because I want to be quick so that we can get you hands on and give you the chance to kind of try some of these things out through some guided examples. I've created five examples for you to try. So we'll go back into the slideshow here. Okay, so... That first section, and I know it was a, a quick taste, was about thinking about how to use all of these social media search tools to find pieces of information that you might want to use in your reporting. So either because it can corroborate information that you already have, or because it can actually lead you somewhere new. Now, the tricky thing is how do you actually assess the credibility of what you found? So let's say you find an amazing post of a video or a photo. How do you figure out whether or not it actually is credible and it offers you useful information? So the first and most important thing to take away is treat information that you find through these fancy OSINT tools, just like you would information from any other information source. So figure out who the source is. Are they credible? Is it somebody you can identify or is it anonymous? And do you have any questions about where it came from? Question whether it has a motivation. So is it 
for example, from a marketing source, or is it a political source, or is there somebody behind it who has a specific motivation, and figure out what they're trying to post for, and figure out the date and the time, and the posting sharing date can be very different from the time that the content was created. So for example, a photo that I took today, I might post it online a year later, or I might post it today, but somebody else shares it a year later. And maybe they share it with a different caption than the one that I put. So it's really, really important when we get these pieces of information to think about all of these questions. Is it authentic? Is it real? Could it have been reused out of context? And there are many examples of this. For example, in South Sudan, there were photos that showed they pretended that it was, or in Sudan, they pretended it was a political leader who was in prison, but actually it was a photo from Kenya. In Nigeria, this has happened with photos from Cameroon. This happens a lot where things that look somewhat similar, people take them and use them out of context, either intentionally or by accident. So it's really important that we try to figure out where these information, uh, pieces of information came from. So the first thing is thinking about, is this account new or old? So this was the example that I pulled up earlier, an account called I Love Trump. And you'll notice that it joined May, 2023. So it's very, very new account and it has zero followers, but they're following a few people. It has a photo, but this photo could very well be stolen or it could be a, a photo taken from the internet. It could be uh, something that was generated with AI. So is the account connected with anybody that you know? Is there anything that could indicate that it's credible? Or maybe is there any identifiable information? In this case, we have no name. We have no information about where they come from. So it's hard to know if they're real. And how many friends or followers or friends of the followers are there? So one of the tools that we can use is something called reverse image searching. So there are a bunch of different tools, again, that can do this. One of them is called TinEye. There's another one called Invid, which is really good, but it's a plugin on your computer. So I'm not gonna show it as much today. And another one called Google Lens, which is built into your Google. And then we're also gonna talk about how you can use satellite imagery, which today we're gonna focus on Google, Street View and Google Earth, because those are the most accessible, easiest ones to use. There are many, many other satellite tools that you can use. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, some require a lot more technical knowledge, and some of them are really simple, but you have to pay a lot of money to access them. So we're going to look just at some very specific examples to give you an idea. Okay, so here's a photo that I took. I actually know that we have somebody on here who is who will maybe know where this is. But if I saw this photo on a social media post, how do I figure out where this location is? So this is where the reverse image search is really great because if I have all these clues, I can see a lot of information on this photo, but I still don't know where it's from, right? It could really be from anywhere in the world. All I know is a photo from an anonymous account, but there's a tool called reverse image searching and there are many, many different ones you can try. This one is Google Lens, where you can search an image and it looks for things that look like that image. So it starts to pull up things that look similar. So here, if I put this image in, I'm starting to get some results. I see some hints. Grand Harbor, Lands and Boutique Hotel Malta. I think we have someone from Malta on this call I saw. So. What I can do with this is say, okay, I'm getting some hints. I think it's in Malta and I think it's near this Grand Harbor location. So now I'm gonna search on Google Maps and I'm gonna look for Grand Harbor. I'm gonna see, okay, I can see a location here. Now I had more clues in that image. So I had some clues, if I go back, I had some clues like this, Burgu. So if I look at Grand Harbor and I start to look at the things that it pulled up that look similar, I can start to look at, okay, maybe it's somewhere near here. Now in this image, we have a yacht and a road and some grass. And then we have some buildings on the opposite side. And we can see that there's another boat over here. 
So we can kind of get a visual of what it might look like from above. So then I'm going to look here. Okay, well, if there's a big boat, maybe it's one of these ones because it said that it was around here and here there's buildings on that side. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Okay, I'm starting to get a feel that maybe it's somewhere along here, right? So now what I can do in some countries, not in every country, is I can start looking at Google Street View. So I can see if I walk along this road, what can I find? So now I'm in Google Street View and I can see, oh, this looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? That building and this perspective. There's a street here, there are buildings on that side. So I can start to figure out where this photo might be taken from. So I'm using the search tool and then I'm using the satellites and the map to try to match the location that I have to the image that I have. Now I can also on this image search filter it even more so I can restrict the amount that I'm looking at and look not for the boat, but only for this one unique building and this sort of skyline. And then I get even more precise answers. So you start to see, okay, there's a lot of things that are pointing me to this specific location. Okay, now I can do the same thing in Google Earth just like you would do on Google Maps, the way that you search on Google Maps, Google Earth is just another tool that gives you extra things that you can do. So the most interesting extra things that Google Earth can allow you to do is go back in time. The other thing it allows you to do is measure distance. So you can figure out how far away things are from each other or how big something is. And the go back in time can be really useful if you want to confirm that something has changed. Now, Many of the paid satellite providers will give you much, much more close together time differences. But unfortunately, if we can't afford those, which many of us can't, and many of us have to use Google Earth and other free tools, there are still a lot of possibilities that you can do with this kind of research. So I just wanna show you an example. I'm not gonna use the app just because it takes a lot of network um, and a lot of power on the computer. So I don't wanna risk that our network um, goes away, which is why I'm doing everything through screenshots for you. So here's an example of research that I did on a project to do with um, a village in South Sudan. Now, if we see this, this building here, if somebody that I interviewed told me this building was destroyed in the conflict, so in recent years, it was destroyed, how can I confirm that? Well, one of the ways that I can do that is actually by using this go back in time tool on Google Maps. So I'm looking right now at 2020, and I can see that that building looks like this. It looks kind of like a shell of a building. It doesn't have a roof. Now, oops. If I go back in time more, I can still see the same thing. Now I'm in 2018. And if I go back in time even more, well, now none of the other buildings are damaged. It's 2016 in March. And at this point, the conflict hadn't come to this region. So actually this building was always under construction. It wasn't actually damaged during that time when other buildings were damaged in between. So I can say, okay, it was in similar state before and after. So this helps me to use to confirm or to challenge information that I get from other sources. It shouldn't necessarily be a source on its own, but it's a tool that you can use to help in your research. And here's another example from uh, January, 2016. And again, you can see the same thing that it's uh, again, not quite, um, uh, constructed yet. Now, the other thing that you can do, the same thing is if you want to measure the damage, the size of something, you can use that ruler tool that I talked about, and you can measure distance. So you can assess how big or how small something is. Okay. And the last thing that I want to talk about a little bit is, okay, so now you've been able to figure out where this photo might be from, but how do you know that it is or isn't actually from that time? So we can do the reverse image search and we can find out if that same image was posted before the date that they say it was filmed. The other thing we can do is look at things like metadata. 
So there are tools like Invid that I told you about that will help you pull out image information. So in the case of the image that I showed you from Malta, if I put it in, you can actually see the date and time originally that the file was created. So you can see what time and day it was. The other thing that you can do is do things like use sun and shadow estimates to try to figure out whether the time aligns. This is just one really small example. There are many, many more detailed explanations of how to do this that we'll share with you in some resources. But this is one tool called sun calc. So basically, if you think about when the sun rises and sets from the east to the west, the shadows also move in different directions every part of the day. So what this tool lets you do is say, okay, on this day, at this time, in this specific location, where should the shadows have been? And now you can see in this photo, the shadows should be pointed this way and about this long. Because I said that the object was about 10 meters tall. So I said this boat mast was about 10 meters tall and the shadow should be going in this direction. So I can get a feel that if the sun was over here, it would be around 8 a.m. in the morning when this photo was taken. So this is another tool. If it was a cloudy day, it won't work. If it was raining, it won't necessarily work. But these are tools that you can use to try to get more information. Okay, so it, as I said, this is a very brief introduction because we wish that we could show you everything, but it would take a really long time. So we wanted to just give you a taste but there are so many more tools and resources that are available. And there are some amazing organizations that have put them together into big lists so that you can go and access and learn through these different tools. So one of them is Bellingcat, which is another media organization that has a whole list of tools in a spreadsheet that you can go through and try different ones for different types of social media. Um, one is the Global Investigative Journalism Network. And then another one is the Journalist Toolbox. So I'm gonna put this back up later, but I want to do a breakout session. So the goal of this is to give you the chance to just try some things out, get a feel for what you can figure out. We have different examples that test different types of things. So here are the exercises and hints. They're in here, I've made it into a document and I think we should have about 10 minutes where we're gonna put you into breakout rooms where you can try. So, here, I'll just copy the link. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. So you're going to get a document here, and it has five different exercises that you can try. They're basically challenges. Some of them are quite simple just to test things out. Some of them are a little bit more complicated and combining a lot of these tasks. And then you can see here that we have hints. I won't show you what they are, but if you feel stuck, these are hints that you can try so that they go step by step a little bit more. And we're here, so if you have questions, you can ping us and then we'll come and try to help. So here is the link, I'll put it in the chat, and then we can put you into breakout rooms so that you can try it out. Okay. So uh, while, while Carolyn is doing that, first of all, thank you very much, Carolyn. Excellent overview, thank you very much. Um, and uh, Fola will now uh, break you uh, into the breakout groups. And as, uh, as Carolyn mentioned, we'll have about 10 minutes. Uh, if you have questions, let us know, and then we'll try to uh, dig in. And then from there, we'll come back and, and wrap up. If people have other questions, we'll stay on afterwards. Thank you so much. So uh, George has put in the, the chat, uh, Carolyn, about Yandex. Um, so thoughts about Yandex for image searching? Yeah, so Yandex is a good one. I think it finds a lot of things depending on what you're looking for. So um, what I would advise, I usually try more than one. Um, Yandex also, because it is a Russian-based site, um, some people might not always want to use it um, if you're worried about security of what you're looking for. Um, but it can be better at indexing specific types of things. Um, if you're looking, for example, in different parts of Africa, it might not have so much information because basically all of these different search tools index different parts of the internet. So sometimes they grab things that Google might not grab, or sometimes they, Bing actually would have more information. 
So Yandex is sometimes really effective, um, but sometimes it doesn't turn up any results depending on kind of what you're looking for. And if as well, if it's a language that is unusual, um, Google might be better because if it's a language that Yandex isn't familiar with, for example, it might not index some of the same uh, types of keywords. Yep, so thank you. Thank you, George. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, please feel free to get get at get after the exercises while you're being moved into the breakout rooms and uh, that process is happening as well. Thank you. Any other questions, of course, are welcome. Okay, so we'll just um, try a few of these out and anybody who is on there on the chat, you can feel free to add. So in this first one, find every Excel document about mining or related to mining, especially German mining companies that's on an official Ugandan government website. If you're here and you're following, if you wanna put in the chat, how would you do that? What kind of searching might you have to do? And if I don't see any, I'll just keep going. So the first step is knowing, okay, what do Ugandan government websites look like? So, Ugandan government websites generally have this at the end, geo.ug. It looks like it from all of the ones that I'm seeing, geo.ug, the government of Uganda, national web portal. So a bunch of Ugandan government websites end with that. There's also Ugandan education, maybe websites, but most of these ones look like they end that way. So first I'm gonna do a site search for geo.ug. So now I'm just getting all of these different Ugandan government websites. Now, what was I asked to look for? I was asked to look for Excel documents. So now, if I go back, I'm going to add in file type search, and I'm going to look for XLS, which is Excel documents. So now I'm getting all of the Excel documents that it can find on these Ugandan government websites. And then I'm gonna add the word mining. And now I'm getting all these different results that have to do with mining. And then here I said, especially German companies. So let's try. If I go back to my search and I'm gonna add Germany. Maybe I won't put it in quotes just in case. So now I'm getting, for example, different documents that reference Germany and also mining in specific Excel documents, like company data of organizations that are operating in Uganda. Uh, so you can see the different results that are coming. Okay, let's go to the next one. Find out any photos from the time before the current president, Ruto, Kenyan president Ruto was elected that he met with Raila Odinga, who is an opposition figure in Kenya. Okay, so here, step by step, the first thing that I'm going to do is try to figure out, okay, I want photos of Ruto and Odinga. So let me think, okay, I'm going to look for For Ruto, the politician first, I found his account. Okay, so let me look for his account ID here, and I'll find the ID for his account. Oops. Now, if you see here, sometimes it doesn't work right away. Sometimes it, it sees that you're doing this and it will reject it and you have to do it a couple of times. Let me just make sure, I think we might still be on Justin Bieber. Just check. Yeah, so this one is just taking a minute. Sometimes you just have to wait a few minutes and do it again, but I already have Ruto's, so I'm gonna go and continue on. So now I'm gonna look for posts. So I'll clear all the filters, I'm gonna say, Posts from Ruto. And I'm going to say, so from before Ruto was elected. So the next thing to know would be, well, when was he elected? I think it was last year, but let's confirm. Oh, 
Okay, so he was elected. Oops. Okay. So he was elected in, um, he took office in September, 2022. So let's say for the purpose of this exercise, that I'd like to find posts from considerably earlier. So let's say from like 2020 and before. So I'll add this date filter and then I'm going to put in Ryla Odinga. So I'm gonna look for all of those results and see what I can find. Okay, so now I'm starting to get photos in which he was there and Odinga was referenced. And then maybe I can start to filter that out, aha. So here are examples where you can see a photo from 2015 of him and Ryla Odinga together. And I can find other ones down below. So this can be really useful if you're trying to track connections between people, this kind of searching. All right. So I think people are gonna be coming back from the breakout room soon. Yeah. Um, sure. Just see. They should be coming back within about a minute. And then we can, what our goal will be is to do a little bit of a summary and a closure, and then we can continue with some questions if we'll have them. Uh, absolutely. So uh, thank you, Carolyn. And as people are coming back in, I know a number of people have asked about the first session. So I will um, just put our YouTube uh, channel um, uh, our, our on to, uh, the chat so that if people want to check out the previous session, we're working to get that up or other trainings that we've done. We did a very interesting training on chat GPT for data visualization, data analysis a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that is where uh, you can get that information. So before we uh, start to wrap up and we have a short survey that we ask people to fill out, can we please thank Carolyn again? Thank you, Carolyn. Yes, very nice, very nice. Thank you. And um, any other final questions uh, before we start to uh, wrap up? Uh, challenges, concerns, how the exercises went, feedback, uh, anything that people would like to share around um, the uh, the exercise and any questions uh, that people might have for Carolyn. Hi, sorry, me again, George. Sorry to take. Can I ask you a quick question about the first one? I literally spent ages on the the Excel document mining Germany. I've 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 a quite problem using that site um, Google search function because it always comes back with no searches. So I I don't know. Yeah, can, sorry, I really struggled with that first one. So I'll give feedback. Back in the well, th thank you, George, for engaging and Carolyn. Uh, thoughts yeah. of yeah. Yeah, so I I did a little demonstration of that one, but I think, I mean, you're right that, so it doesn't always come up with the best results, but I find it can come up with really great results. So this was just an example, but um, here, if we go through, um, let me just, okay, so if we go here, so we we said that we're looking first for, okay, the Ugandan government, what their website structure looks like. So generally it ends with go.ug. So then I would do site go.ug here. So now I'm getting all of their different results of the government sites that exist with that, with that um, ending. And so you can see here, there are about, a million results that it came up with of sites that have that. So that would include like these main sites and then also all the ones inside. So then I added file type and here I add XLS. And so I don't know if this is the same way that you, um, that you did it, but um, I do think maybe you can also try the, the other one that you were talking about. I usually do use this one. So here, now we can see 
all of the different Excel documents that exist. So we only got 180 because there might not actually be that many. If we do PDF, we can just see to compare. So PDF, it got 60,000. So they also might not have so, so many. And then if we do doc, they get about 3,000. So these would usually be for like forms. So if you wanna know what kind of data does the government collect, the forms to know what exist for what they're gathering can be really helpful. But so if we go back to here with this example, we have XLS. So now we're finding all the Excel files that exist. And then, so there are different ways and there isn't any right way to do this. I basically put in the word like mining and then I put in Germany just to see what results I would get. So here I start to get results that are companies, listing of companies that are investing in Uganda or something like that. And we start to see mining companies. And then we see some companies that are also connected to Germany. So I haven't gone through to see what all of the results are, but these are different examples of kind of the steps that I would take. And if you're not finding the right thing, you could also look up things like DE, because that's the way that in, in a, um, an address, it might look if they have an address there, for example. In this case, it doesn't really come up with anything, but sometimes you might find things like that. So you have to think about like, hmm, are there other ways that Germany would be represented or also Deutschland because maybe they use, oops, maybe they use the, the way that they actually refer to the country itself. In this case, no. But so basically the reason that I sort of wanted to summarize thinking about all these, all these different ways to look at it there's not going to be one perfect answer. There are ways that you can also try different things. You can also do things like do mines and then do Germany and see what you can find. Maybe there will be more, maybe there'll be less. And you can notice here. So one of the things that has changed since this tool first existed is that Google has gotten smarter. So it actually tries to guess what it thinks you want. So it looks up mining, even though you said you want mines. So there are different tools that sometimes it'll guess and sometimes it'll guess right and sometimes it'll guess wrong as well. So this is why I say, I wouldn't think there's always one perfect way to do it, but these are kind of things that you can go through and try. So, Karen, just yeah. while we're here, because I use this a bit frustrated by it. Um, does the dot before the GO matter and does the, um, the, um, the order, the hierarchy, you put everything in? So I did site, then I did Mines Germany, then I did file type or whatever so does it matter the pro how you prioritize the search it, sh and does the it shouldn't matter yeah so the dot does matter so if we put the dot let's see what happens sometimes it won't work at all in this case it still works um but there are times if you put for example a slash it may or may not in this right. case it's okay just just one sec uh carolyn thank you so much george oh yeah so i i just want to acknowledge that we're just one minute past the hour so if folks do want to leave, we did say it was an hour long session. So please feel free to leave. But Carolyn is willing uh, to stay on for another, you know, 20, 30 minutes and answer questions as they come up. George has some questions. Esther had a question in the chat. So I just want to say, if folks do want to go, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your being here. But of course, folks are welcome to say, I don't want to cut anything off, but just wanted to acknowledge that we are at the end of the time that we had said initially. So. Sorry to interrupt there, Carolyn, back to you. Yeah, not at all. And so I think um, also what we can do is if you have specific questions, you can kind of um, post. Oh, okay. Let me go back first to the resource page here. So this is my favorite kind of starting point of, of tools. And this is a bit.ly link that's quite easy to copy. So these are really good, good kind of uh, repositories of a bunch of tools that exist and some instructions in some cases of how to use them. And like I said, there's just, there are always going to be more tools. People keep inventing new versions all the time. Questions about their on this YouTube channel that Jeff has been sharing in the chat. Um, and so the part one as well that Ajibola led about tracking planes and ships will also be there as well as one that you she did about uh, chat GPT view and check all of the information again. Um, and yeah, basically the biggest takeaway I think for all of this OSINT training is that 
people. So thinking about kind of what, what to use the right tool and then to know how to use it properly is really what I feel is important. Um, so that's why I highlight so much. Think about what, what can you use to filter down your search and what can you use to widen your search enough that you're really trying to not miss anything, but find the things that you actually need. And so in this case, for example, maybe one of the best ways to solve the, the first example is actually to take out Excel documents at first, to just look for any, any results about mining and Germany that are on Ugandan websites, and then go from there and then see what you can find. Once you have a company name, then you can look for Excel documents that list that company, for example. So all of these are kind of different things. I just think that it's really helpful to kind of think about all of this is thinking about the connections and always kind of looking at how do I narrow but still stay wide enough. Okay. Just checking if there are more questions. So again, I'm happy to stay for longer if there are more questions. And if we wanna go through some of the specific examples, we can go through and, and show different ways that you can, uh, can try them all out. Well, Esther had a question about the overview of the tools, but that slide that you're on at the moment, <laughs> Carolyn, is is speaking to that. And um, we will send, uh, as a follow-up note to everybody who attends, we will send the, the presentation that Carolyn has done. So Esther, you and everybody else will have access to that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Esther. <laughs> okay. So uh, other, other questions, comments? Uh, issues that people wanted to raise either to Carolyn or experiences during the training, uh, anybody else? Uh, okay, and I think, did you did you see the one from George, Carolyn, about the before function uh, in the custom range tool? There's a custom range, but can I look oh. before a certain date related to the second uh, George had that one. No, um, I, do, I don't think there's a before in Google on the Google searches. I wish there were, I agree with you. That would make a lot of sense. Um, but generally I think the custom range is the best way you can. There are these kind of pre-built in ones like within the last year, within the last month. Um, but generally I find that I use the custom because you're looking usually for a specific time range. Um, the other thing to remember is that there's a certain period where there just wasn't that much on the internet before. Um, so, you know, they're only going to go back so far and then it won't necessarily be that useful anyways. Um, so if it goes back 50 years, well, it won't necessarily matter so much. Um, and you can order your results as well. Um, so you can try to find ones that are more relevant to you by trying to order by more recent. Okay, and thank um, you, Carolyn. And then, yeah, Jonathan has a question. Uh, if we have queries at a later stage, it's an email address we can use to contact. So might might uh, you be able to field kind yeah. of queries with that? I'm happy okay? to do that. Yeah, yeah I'm happy yeah. to do that. What I will say is that I am definitely not an expert on every every tool. So <laughs> I am happy to also, if you email me, direct you to the place where you can get the best answer. Um, because I won't necessarily know the answer, but these are really good places to start, but also feel free so you can reach out to me at uh, CCIJ. So, um... And so yeah, Carolyn, we'll just put that in the chat. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Um, anybody else, uh, additional questions or, or comments don't have to be, but just we wanted to extend that opportunity and Carolyn has graciously agreed uh, to stay if people do have other just questions they want to raise, issues, conversations, and so on. Yeah, yeah. my name is Hola uh, Yeah, I, can I go? Can I go on? Please, please, Oleginka, you're welcome. Yes, please. We we will look forward. Yeah, to yeah. so uh, yeah, I'm still Hola Inka from. I mean, I'm busy from the International Center for Lesbian Reporting, busy in Nigeria, Abuja. So I think this has been a very um, eye-opening uh, uh, section, and I have learned a lot. So from uh, from the searches, so what I wanted to ask Caroline is, how do you look for? Um, so I, what do you look for? I, I could call the person the ghost online. Some uh, look for search for someone online that was at ten was online before, but currently right now you can't get much information from. That account again. So uh, from the persons online again. So few this month during an Nigeria 2023 election, I noticed a lot of accounts 
actually started springing up like that's like a few months before the election and they were using people's images people they were using people's images people from europe people from us to just create fake accounts online a lot of those accounts were just so during the election and maybe a month to the election we were posting a lot of misinformation a lot of cooked up information that didn't exist against uh, a particular some particular candidates that actually so I actually got to start trying to track one particular candidate, uh, one particular Twitter account that has actually built its profile from February last year to this year. I got to notice that the picture the person was using from, from a model in from a model in USA, and the picture was taken by a photojournalist based in um, I think California or something there, but I, I can't recollect. So I actually try, I'm actually stuck with that report now because I got in contact with the, the photographer that the photographer that took the picture and he actually told me that because of US um, uh, privacy law, he wouldn't be able to give me information, particularly the uh, uh, information on that person. Because, so this guy, as the person using that information, has been using that lady's, uh, the, the, uh, the model picture to post a lot of stuff and he, account has come out to say that that image belongs to it and she's the one posting. So from what I've gotten that is trying to actually create a false information online. I could actually share the Twitter account and I've actually had to share the Twitter account of where the person, uh, the Twitter account that I'm trying to track. So right now I've actually stopped tracking the Twitter account because I've actually, I, I chatted the Twitter account, the person has posted a picture claiming that she is the one using that account, but my instinct tells me that that picture and that account is actually a fake account. I'm just, I'm just, I've been looking for the person I've actually your voice. Is there a way we can search for people online using their picture? Do I have the person's first name yeah. and initial name? Okay. Yeah, okay. So I thought there were kind of a couple of questions in this question, um, but maybe I, I miss it. So one question is when people are using fake photos or photos that they've taken from somewhere else. How can you figure that out? And then what do you do with that information? Um, yeah. And then the other the other question that you had was if if the account that you identified as posting disinformation no longer is online, was that the other question? Like if it disappears? No, no, no. So, so I know. The, the picture, no, the second question is like, so the picture of the lady, I noticed that uh, the photographer that took it uh, um, usually post, whenever you post online, you actually tag your own of the picture. But what I noticed is that that, uh, that, uh, that account of the real lady that was picture doesn't exist again, doesn't exist no more. So that is, I think that's why this current person is in the picture because the lady doesn't actually exist online again. For whatever reason, I don't, I don't know the reason why she went, off, uh, she went offline. But what I noticed is that there are a lot of people in Nigeria that are now using that, um, that model picture to actually create misinformation. Yeah, okay. So. Um, let's, let's look at an example. So here, um, I underscore love one, three, four, six, nine. Okay. Yeah, this one. Okay. So if we take this example, so here's a photo. So this could be a real person, but there are lots of things that make us think they're probably not a real person. So we have this photo. So the first thing I can do as a way is I can screenshot the photo. So now I, I have my own version. I can also save it. So I have a version of this photo. Right, so I'm just going to save that that photo, and now I have it. Okay, so we were talking about all the different search tools that exist. So the first one, if I go here and I do Google Lens, so you see here I'm going to this this little icon that looks like a camera on Google, and I click that, and I'm going to upload a photo. So I'm going to go to this one first that I screenshotted. So let's see, is it there already? Uh, not that one, this one. Here we go. And then here's the one that we saved. So we'll take this one first. Okay. Okay. All right, just one sec, Kelly. All I get, yeah. Kelly, thank you very much for the question. Can you please mute? Because there's a little bit of background. Oh. Noise, but yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm on the time. Yeah. No, no, no problem. No problem. Thank you so much. Oops. So in this case, if we take this example, and we try to identify this photo. We're gonna try first with Google Lens. Okay, so it doesn't find this exact one. We can try finding the image source. 
to see if it can find, oh, interesting. A whole bunch of people with accounts that seem to have the same image, right? Pardon me, there's a fly. Okay, so here, if we look, oh, interesting, the same image. And then if we go back to our results, interesting, oh, not that one. This is perhaps a different result that's referencing that photo. But so we have different results that are using the same image. So now we already have a reason to think, hmm, maybe this image isn't actually what we think it is. So then we can also try some of those other tools. So we talked about Yandex. So let's try Yandex. This is another one. So it's just another one that you can try. They'll do different things. So, oops, just... so here again, I click on the camera and then I'm gonna select a file. So I'll select the one that I saved. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, now we can find similar images. Okay, so we see this one. No other sizes, but look at all the different places that have this one. So here's another one, spaces dashboard. Is this the same person? Purple shirt, it could be. So this might be another one of the same person, hard to tell. So we're finding some other images of the same one. So now you can see that that image is affiliated with a bunch of different things. Okay, so basically what you can start to do is identify, are there other places that this image was shown? And then I think what you were also saying is if you can then figure out who the actual person is or who took the photo, the original photo, this is where none of these tools stand alone. They're part of a reporting process, right? So then we have to go and, and find that person and say, did you know your image is being used by this other thing? Is this you? If they say it's them, that's another part of the reporting process. If they say it's not them, then there are more questions to be asked about who's behind that actual account, right? And it's not necessarily gonna be so easy to track down the actual person who is behind a fake account, but you might be able to by doing things like looking for who they're related to, who they connect with. You know, for example, this other one that we found, this one that, that has the same picture, has this picture. So maybe like, maybe it's the same person or maybe this photo was taken and this is actually that person, right? Are they verified? They're a verified account, but it verified in the new way. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything because they might've paid for it, right? But it shows that it's a reporter. So it's possible that it's their account, but it's unlikely, right? So you can follow up and do more reporting and then try to assess. So basically you can kind of go through these different technical steps and then go through the, the reporting steps to try to figure out all of those different pieces. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So no, th thank you uh, very much, Olayinka, and thank you, uh, Carolyn. Um, I saw Olede had his hand up, and Irene has put in the chat. Thanks, Carolyn. Please, can we do exercise four, trying to get a hang of Google Earth or Maps? And Olayinka, if you have an additional question, if you can just please put it in the chat, or there's some part that we didn't quite address, please put that in the chat so we can try and make sure we address everybody's uh, question. Okay, so Olede, over to you. Okay, it looks like he is no longer here. So um, why don't we then go to Irene's question and then Olayinka, if there's other parts that, uh, you, you know, we can dialogue a little bit for, more about, that would be great. We can do that. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn, yeah. uh, exercise four, and then over, if Olayinka has, or anybody else has anything else, then we'll start to wrap up. Yeah, perfect. So this one, so you can do this with Google Maps, but you can also do it with Google Earth Pro, which you can download and use for free. So I can show you with Maps, but I think I'll actually, I'll stop sharing and then show you with Google Earth Pro, just so that you can get a feel for it. Because I think um, now it, I'm less worried about our, our internet breaking. Um, so let me stop the share for a second, and then I'll open up Google Earth Pro and show you how I would do that here. So if I share my screen, okay, here we go. Google Earth Pro. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you download it onto your actual computer. So we're not working in a browser now, we're working off of my computer itself. So I'll close this. 
So I'm first just going to start with, so I said Malakal, South Sudan. So there were a couple of steps involved in this process, which is kind of figuring out where to look for. The first thing is I, I gave you this information. So we knew the city and the country. So we're just going to put this in. So the first thing is we just look at, okay, what, what do we have? So this is a city. So we can see here a city that exists. And if we start zooming in, we can see that while there are lots of buildings, there's also a lot of this sort of strange empty space. So here in Google Earth Pro, oops, I can click on this time tool, which I was showing you before, and then I can start looking back in history. So you can see right now we're looking at this month, but if I start going backwards in time, so we can see what it looked like. And then if we go back in time, we can see various different things. I'm gonna scoot back a lot because there are a whole bunch of images from this region. You can see all the different options of time. So here, if I go back, let's say to 2013, wow, here, there are a whole bunch of houses that are here. And if I go back even further to 2011, there's also people who seem, to, there's buildings and all sorts of things that seem to be here. And if I go back even to 2005, you can see, oh, some of this is different. The development looks a little bit different. So if I look over here, for example, here you can see what look like a whole bunch of different houses, right? So you can see little fences and then you can see roofs. You can see little roofs here. So this is probably where people lived. And then if I go now forward in time, I can see that some of those don't seem to exist anymore. Some of them still do, but some of them don't, right? So before there were ones that seemed much more, um, here, let's look. Yeah, so here you can see all sorts of buildings. And then now here, if we go further forward in time, there's just nothing. And if we go even to today or to as recent as possible, there's just nothing here. So what this gives us some indication of is that we know something happened between that time and now. So then if I zoom back out, okay, so now I can see all this area where there's just nothing and there used to be buildings, right? Between 2013 and now. And the context for South Sudan, which I didn't give you, but is that in 2013, there was um, an attack in this region and a lot of people ended up living in a displacement site. And so here, if I zoom out a bit and I start, if I do my research, so I would start researching, well, where is the displacement site? Here, you can see, we're now in 2013. This was the UN base, some of the UN base. And then as we move forward in time, we can see all of the people ended up living inside of it, inside this region. So you can see here that these are, are structures. These are buildings, essentially, tents or homes. So you can see between 2011, when it was just nothing, or to, sorry, that's 2005, 2011, so there started to be some construction, 2013, still nothing. And then a site where people were living. Mm. So this is just to give you an idea. And then what I can do with this tool is I can actually measure things like size. So I can say, okay, I wanna know from this side to this side, how long is that? That's about half a kilometer. And then I can start doing some math of, okay, how big is this location? And I can do the same thing. If I clear that and close it, I can do the same thing for how much is, is gone of what this city used to be. So this used to be like quite a populated bustling city. And as you can see now, much of it is lost. And so this is, this is an example of research that we did for some stories that helped us understand the scale of movement and displacement that had happened even just next door because people don't feel safe to live there now. So this is just one example of kind of a tool that you can use. And again, all of this is free. And they, this one has many, many, many images that you can check. So if you wanted to know, was there an attack on the village and at what time, you might be able to see really close together. If we look at some of the other locations that I showed you, 
there will be far fewer options of time that you can look at. So we, it really depends on luck as well if you have access to the free imagery or if you need to pay for it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you uh, very much, Carolyn. And thank you, Irene. And Olede, it looks like, has returned. Uh, Olede, did you have a question uh, that you wanted to ask? I thought I saw your hand up earlier. You're welcome to either say it or uh, put it in the chat. Uh, so I wanted to make sure you had that opportunity. Then we'll, if Olayinka or anybody else has anything, it looks like, yeah. So uh, Olayinka, um, if, if you had anything else, we can address that too. So um, Olede, over to you or? Okay. Olayinka, did you have another uh, part that you wanted to address uh, in your question? Yes, Olayinka? Yes, yes. I actually I sent Caroline the accounts. So I'm trying uh, I'm typing and I'm typing my message on the uh, chat box. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. he's communicating directly. So thank you uh for that, Olayinka. Um and uh any anybody else uh before we uh wrap up, uh Fola has organized for a survey uh that will come. So we welcome you're filling out the survey so that we can incorporate that feedback and also use uh, the survey for uh, input to then um, try and provide, get resources to provide more of these trainings and to improve uh, what we do. Obviously, there's a very strong training, but I'm just saying we're always looking to improve and to grow. So um, anybody else? Okay, in that case, uh, thank you again, uh, everybody for being here. Please join me one more time at thanking Carolyn and Fola for their uh, presentation and organizational work. Thank you. Thank you, Sarita, for live Thanks, streaming. And every, everyone's pretending. And please do uh, be in touch. And we look forward to continuing the connection and we'll be in touch with you about our upcoming trainings. We have trainings on fact checking, on working with trauma, uh, among other issues. So thank you very much. And uh, we will sign off now. See you. Thank you.